Hi there, it's Michelle Eaton here and today we're going to have a look at creating a YouTube thumbnail. What we're going to use today is a free software, Canva. So what we need to do is go to canva.com. I'm already logged in. Um, you can log in with Facebook or create an account using your email. So um, I'll let you decide how you want to do that. And the other thing we're going to need is uh, some idea of what we want. Now Canva do have a lot of um, their own sort of templates that you can use. But what I'd suggest is getting something a bit more uh, unique for yourself. So maybe um, you could just take what, what a good way of doing it is, is just take um, a screenshot of one of your videos. Failing that, if you just want to uh, find an image, what I did for this particular one is go to Pixabay. You can find all kinds of things. So you just type in the search here. You can log in, but you can you don't need to. So what I did for this one, I typed in Nebula, and I use this one here. Looks like kind of a a horse's head, doesn't it? That one. That's the one I used. So you click on the one you want, and as you can see, it's free for commercial use, and no attribution is required. So you can just click on free download, choose the size you want. Now this is the size you want, 1920 by 1080. That's the exact size that you do want for a YouTube thumbnail. So then you go ahead and download. And there you go, it'll download. I think if if um, if you're not logged in, it may ask you for the capture, type in the capture code. But So yeah, that's that downloaded. And the, the other thing I got from Pixabay, is a YouTube logo. Now, as we're going to be using Canva, they've got their own YouTube logos that you could use, but just for the sake of being a little bit different. I've got mine from here. Ah, that was the one, that kind of 3D looking one. So that was the one I chose. And again, it's free, no attribution, so you can use it no problem. We can't download. Any size would be okay for that because we're gonna shrink this one down anyway. Click on download. There you go, it's asking for a capture this time. That I can't read even with my glasses on. Uh, refresh. Okay, I'm not going to um, do that now because I've already downloaded it, but that's exactly what you'd do um, to find what whatever you want from Pixabay. Then we come back to Canva and we click this button here, create a design. We use use custom dimensions and it's 1920 by 1080 pixels design. I will wait while that loads. And then we're going to go to our uploads. Now I downloaded those pictures that I got from Pixabay and I've already uploaded them to Canva, but if you haven't and you need to upload, you click upload your own image. There you go, you can see what I uploaded. So, mine are already done. So here's the one I got from Pixabay, the background. It's there. So, I'm going to make sure I go in just over. That completely fills that area. And then we're going to bring in the logo. You just click the item on the left and the logo comes in. It doesn't show up very well there, but it shows up nicely down here. So I'll pop that down there. And then I've, I think, yes, I know this one was actually against my green screen. There you go. That's the original. Obviously that's, unless you have a completely green thumbnail, it's not really going to be useful. So what I had to do was take that and cut out the edge. Now I've, done, I've not done a great job there, but it's not too bad. That was using GIMP and I'll show you how to do that in another video. For now, in Canva, I've bought that cut out picture in. 
So I'm going to put it in the corner and then I'm going to make it bigger. And move it over to the corner again. There we go. Now, as you can see, this picture I've brought in is really kind of uh, pale, blown out compared to the background here, which is obviously a fully opti optimized image downloaded from Pixabay. Pixabay won't allow any image that images that are low quality. But this I've just taken from a video that I've shot. So if you'd have taken the whole screenshot as your background, and that's what we were looking at now, then you would apply this, you would select by clicking outside the whole surrounding area. But that's fine because I've already downloaded a high quality image, but this I've brought in, very washed out and pale. So what we're going to do while this is selected is come up to filter, click filter. Now we don't want to use any of those preset filters, but I want you to watch what happens. Click on advanced. And what we're going to do is adjust just a few settings. We're going to take the brightness down. Now this is going to depend, obviously, on what you're looking at, but this is obviously too bright, too washed out. So I'm going to take this down to 34. And I'm going to take the contrast up because it was washed out. We want to get the hair darker and the red redder. I'm going to take that up to 30. Actually, I'm going to take it up to 40. The background is so vivid, and then the saturation. I'm going to take that up to about thirty, and the blur. I'm going to take it down so it actually sharpens the image. Get that to twenty six, and I think that I'll do. So I'll click away, and now you can see the difference. So all the colours are really popping there, and then finally. We need to add some text. Before we do, we're going to add a shape so that the text stands out because this is quite a quite a busy background. So we go to elements and we choose shapes. Uh, what should we choose? Choose this one. There we go. Move that over to the side. Resize it. I'm going to take the transparency down slightly. Add some text onto that. So you're going to add a heading, choose the font we want. You need something that's going to um, be clear to read because your thumbnail is so small. Norwester, where's that now? That's not bad. I have to make, we'll make that bigger, we'll make it a dark grey, and then we'll make this bigger to accommodate it. And I found the best way to line up your text is make sure that each side is lined up to your shape. Like so. And make sure there's no spaces before or after. And that should centre it quite nicely then. And then we want to do another one. That's it. Move that to here. What was that font called? A oh, Norwester. So we want this to be Norwester. There we go. We want this to be a grey. This to be larger too. Maybe we could get away with larger than that actually. Let's try a 64. And just enlarge everything. No. See how that's not quite lined up now? That's because that's it. If we line up the edges of our text, that's going to centralise it. Thumbnails. Add a subheading. We'll say four. I'll leave that black. A bit bigger still, and I'm going to rotate that. And finally, YouTube. I want that to 
be lined up too. So here, what I'm going to do is take that down to that bit there. So that starts just after that point and that ends just after that point. That's good enough. That's good enough. Could be just a touch whiter. Take that to 90. Because you've got to remember that the thumbnail is so small. So we want it to be plenty readable. Now I think that needs to go up slightly too. Mm, I also think it probably needs to be bigger. Which means it's got to be moved again. And I think this needs to come up a bit. So we'll go with that. Click on the name up here. And we'll call it. YouTube thumbnail and then we'll click download as a PNG and download that and there we can see it's downloading for us. So the next step to assign this to a video in YouTube. So we come along to our YouTube channel, click on our picture and then click on create a studio, come along to video manager and then we can choose one of our videos. So if we click on edit and then we come down here to custom thumbnail, so open that wait for that to upload um, the problem is if you look it says custom thumbnail maximum file size is 2 meg so if I come back to my images you can see that the PNG I downloaded if I hover over is 2.39 meg so what I had to do Let's come back to Canva and download as a JPEG. JPEG, as you can see, is 1.06 meg. So that should work. I'd be so pleased. Try again. This time we're going to pick up the JPEG. There we go. So let's save that. Come back to Video Manager, and now you can see at the top of my list that the thumbnail has been set. Now it's important in order to have the option for custom thumbnails on your YouTube channel, you need to enable your channel for monetization, and I'll be covering how to do that on another video.